Welcome back. Um, our next topic and the topic of this video is going to be what is a force. Um, this comes from chapter or section 3.2 in your OpenStax textbook. We're going to be going through Newton's laws. And so we're trying to connect the dots here from Tycho and Kepler's laws to Galileo and now to Newton's laws. And eventually our goal is to understand orbits. So I know you might have heard of Newton's laws before, but I don't want you to tune out because we're trying to fill in the gaps. We're taking this historical journey to understand what's going on um, with gravity and orbits. And we have to understand Newton's laws really well in order to do that. Okay, so Newton came after Galileo right? His laws are consistent with Kepler's laws, but they help us to describe the why, right? Um, so Kepler described the how, Newton's going to explain the why. So we're going to do a quick review of Newton's three laws, and then we're going to talk about Newton's law of gravity um, coming up here in the future. Okay, so Newton's first law this is where we make our connection to Galileo. Newton's first law is the law of, yes, inertia, right? That's what Galileo came up with. This is Galileo's results, um, but it was formalized, um, written down, sort of thought about um, in connection with these other laws by Newton. Um, so Newton was after, after Galileo. We are now up into the late 1600s with Newton, early 1700s. So we've come a little ways um, up in history from Tycho and Kepler. So um, another way to put uh, the law of inertia is an object at rest. Say it with me. Stays at rest and a an moving object keeps moving, right? That's what we said. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist change in motion. I'm going to say this moving part a little differently than you may have heard before, but it's important, okay? So an object at rest stays at rest, an object in motion stays in motion, but I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to add a little bit to it. A moving object will stay in not just motion, but constant motion unless, okay, we see objects stop moving all the time. Why do objects stop moving? because a force, more specifically an unbalanced force, has acted on them. Okay, so a moving object will stay in constant motion, like its motion is not going to change, it's going to stay the same kind of motion, unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Okay. So you can see we're getting a little bit deeper than an object at rest stays at rest. This we're going to see is the why to Kepler's first law. Kepler's first law is that orbits are elliptical. We're going to get there, okay? So constant motion, I want to just pick up on these few ideas again. Constant means constant speed in a constant direction. Right? The object is going to keep doing what it's doing. Keep on keeping on. So keep that in your mind. Unbalanced force. We're going to get to talking about forces here <laughs> in the second law. Unbalanced means that you have one force that's stronger than another force. Okay, So keep those things in mind as we move on to the next laws. All right. Okay. So, Newton's second law. Newton's 
second law. Unbalanced force again. Here's how I'm going to write it. That unbalanced forces, those ones that can change the motion of something that we saw in first law, unbalanced forces cause a change in motion. What's the word for a change in motion? Acceleration. So un balanced forces cause acceleration. Acceleration is just a fancy word for saying a change in speed or, and this is important, this is important especially for orbits that we'll get back to, direction. Okay, We tend to think of acceleration as only speeding up. But you got to put your physics hat on and say that acceleration can be speeding up. It can also be slowing down. It's any change in speed or it can be a change in direction. So look at this little picture right here. So we have speeding up, right? That's normally what we think of as acceleration. You put your foot on the gas pedal and you speed up. And that causes a change in motion. Look, they got this little coffee cup here so that you can just kind of remind yourself um, that even though you might be sitting in a car and it may not seem like the stuff around you is moving, it is. Like if it's a liquid, it can get sloshed around, right, when you accelerate. But acceleration is also slowing down. So I like to do this little um, analogy that when you're thinking about acceleration, think of it as three different things. It could be the gas pedal, right, speeding up at the accelerator. That's what we call it, right? It could be the brake. It can be slowing down. But, and here's the kicker, I don't have a picture for this one, acceleration can also be the steering wheel. You could be going at the exact same speed, 20 miles an hour, but you turn the car to turn a corner and you are changing direction. That is acceleration. You have to have an unbalanced force. The steering wheel moves the wheels of the car. You're creating a force to turn the car. That is acceleration. This is going to link us back to Kepler's second law of whoops, unequal areas um, in, sorry, lost everything there, um, um, equal areas and equal times. Sorry, equal areas and equal times. Kepler's second law. All right. I know it's not all linked in your head yet, but um, we'll get there. Okay. We'll we'll talk about it as we talk about gravity. Okay. So I'm not done with Newton's second law yet. Um, Newton's second law has a couple of parts to it. We have force. So we have used this word unbalanced force. What's another way to think about that? An unbalanced force is equal to an object. Objects have mass. they got stuff in them. Times an acceleration. This is how we often write it in math terms. So Newton's second law, which says that an unequal force causes an object to accelerate can also be thought of as F equals mass times acceleration. F equals MA, um, mass times acceleration. Now again, I'm not going to give you numbers, you're not going to have to put anything in this equation, but I do want you to understand the relationships that are going on here. Okay, so relationships, what's going on? This means um, that if you have a greater force, 
you take that unbalanced force, that push, that pull, remember forces can be lots of different things, push or pull, and you have more of it, what does that mean? A greater force means greater change in motion, greater acceleration for the same mass, the same object, right? So you can translate this. More push or pull, greater force, means more change in motion, right, in speed up, slow down, or turn for the same object, the same mass, right? Force equals mass times acceleration just means that there's a relationship between how much acceleration you get and how much force you give. Okay. But what if I change the object? Um, instead of having the same object, what if I put more weight, more mass, um, and I try to push it with the same force? Then I don't get as much change in motion. I don't get as much acceleration. So I get less acceleration for a given force. Okay. Um, think of an example where you are adding weight. You're sitting on a rolly chair. Somebody sits in your lap. Somebody else pushes you. You're not going to roll very far because you got two people sitting in the chair. So if you add more mass, even if somebody gives a good push, a force, you're not going to move with the same amount of acceleration. Okay? All right. So um, here's another qu clicker question. Oh, sorry. Uh, for y'all today. Okay? Clicker question. Write that down. Think about it. Um, sorry, and this was the picture I was supposed to show earlier. Here she's got this cart. She pushes the cart. You get some amount of acceleration, but now she adds more mass to the cart. It's 200 instead of 100. She gives it the same push, but it is not going to roll as much. Okay, so answer that clicker question, right, um, on the Moodle quiz. Last piece to this, um, to finish out this video, we are going to do Newton's third law. Okay, Newton's third law. I'm sure that you have heard this in um, various ways. I'm going to start by saying that forces occur in action reaction pairs. So that means basically that whenever you have a push or a pull, you have something opposing it, another push or a pull going in the opposite direction, right? The more common way um, that this is phrased is that for every action, there is an equal, ah, pen, an equal, now I'm going to pause here, equal size and opposite, second pause, direction, reaction. Okay, so normally people spit out for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Notice it's an equal size reaction, but it goes in a different direction. When we say opposite, we mean if one goes up, the other goes down. But when we say equal, we mean it's the same amount of force, right? So, a classic example here is our rocket, right? We have 
forces going in opposite directions, right? All that rocket fuel burning creates a push um, and it pushes off the ground, right? It opposes gravity. It's another way to think about it. Um, and it has to be a big enough force to get the, sh the rocket off the ground. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. Now, for our purposes, we're always trying to think about orbits and how does this relate to things going around the sun and the moon going around the earth. Well, we need to remember that this is, whoops, true, hello, for all forces, including gravity. And this is the sticky one. And this is the one that we're going to talk about um, in our next series of videos, our next class, that even gravity has an equal and opposite reaction force. It doesn't seem like it, right? Because gravity tends to pull things down. What's the opposite of it? There is an opposite. You are being pulled by gravity but you are also pulling on the earth with your own gravity. Okay, we are going to see that um, coming up in the next one. Okay, before I leave you, at the end of this video, here is one more clicker question. Read it, um, go to Moodle to answer it on the Moodle quiz. And then I'm also going to give you a link to the best video on Newton's third law ever. Uh, <laughs> That's the title of it, so watch that as well. Okay, see y'all 